Welcome back. So we've been working on creating a very simple game so far. We've got images that move around on the screen. But now we'd like to add a very simple scrolling background. And I know, I know, before you tell me too much or complain too much, I know tiled backgrounds are the way to go, but a scrolling background does offer some benefits to a beginner programmer and it does teach you a few things that are important to know anyway, so please bear with me. I'm going to include a visual explanation of the process for creating your background. Here's the background that I've created. So you can see I've got my first image is identical to my last image. They're the same size. They look exactly the same, but you'll notice I drew in here an oval and on this one a rectangle. And that's only to help you visualize what's happening. Not for any other reason. You don't actually want that occurring on your good copy of your background. And then this one here is just a random other image that I, I pulled off of the computer. All three of these have a width of 1024 pixels just for simplicity and to make the scrolling change appear faster. Okay, I'm going to try and create a visual representation of what's happening in your app with the scrolling background. So here's your iPad with a width of 10, 1024. And then here's your three images. Okay. So let's watch what happens. When your iPad app loads, this image is on the screen already. So you can see it goes from edge to edge. And this top coordinate is what we care about. And that coordinate would be zero, zero. If it was actually on your iPad, it would be up here. But you'll just have to visualize that zero, zero. We're not worried about a Y value because the, in this case, our background is scrolling uh, this way, not up and down. All right, so the image starts scrolling. And then eventually it will get back to this duplicated part. And it's right here that you want to know where you're sitting at. Because it's right here, when this is on the full screen, that it will jump back to the first image. Jumps right back there. You won't see a change. And then start scrolling again. Now the reason you want that duplicate there is picture if we were scrolling through that yellow sunset. What would you be seeing right now if there wasn't the, this image right here? You'd be seeing the blackness of the iPad background. You wouldn't be seeing anything else. So it would, this would all be black right now. And that doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't look right unless that's what you wanted it to look like. So you want to get it all the way to here and then zip, it jumps back to this point and you, you can't tell the difference between when it was sitting on this screen versus when it's sitting on this screen and it immediately starts scrolling again. So we need to know what the coordinate would be of this point right here in the top left when this is fully on screen so that the iPad will know when to switch to the correct um, location. So let's figure this out. This well, it started at 0, 0. Then we shifted it one full screen. That's 1024 to the left. So it would actually be the coordinate of negative 1024. We shifted it more. Another full screen. So another 1024. So that's actually negative 2048. And then the y value would be 0. So what we want to tell it is that when it this point hits this coordinate of negative 2048 and 0 to jump back to the coordinate 0, 0. And we'll show you the coding for that. So I need to introduce some variables. I want to introduce my background image. So we'll call it BG image. And that's um, going to be me adding the image into memory. And then I want to show the background. So we'll call it background view. 
and it is possible to combine these all into one step. Then we want to keep track of the x-coordinate because the x-coordinate, the top left-hand corner, that shifting, we need to know where it is at all times. So we're going to call it global x. You can call it whatever you want. Track x, doesn't matter. All right, so let's go into app main. We want to set global x to zero. We want the background image to start at zero, zero. And we never change our y coordinate. That's why we're not worried about setting our y coordinate as a variable. It will always be zero. So let's load the image into memory. And then let's actually place the image on the screen. At the coordinates global x, which will change, and the y coordinate of zero. Okay, so that's it um, for adding that. If we have five it right now, we should just see that first image because it's meant to fill up the entire screen. And there we go. So you can see that my drawing is shifted out just slightly. I should change that. But right here, there's that circle, that, or that oval that I was talking about. So we know that this is the first image because the rectangle was on the third image. There's the oval, and there's the rectangle. All right, so we're looking at this image right now. Now it's just a matter of telling the app to shift it to the left. So what we want to happen, we're going to go into on timer because it's an animation. We want this to happen automatically, 30 times per second. We want to decrease the x coordinate by one. So we'll say global x minus minus. So that means the negative means decrease and the second negative means by one. You can also put negative one, it, that would work too. So what was zero would then become negative one and zero, negative two and zero, negative three and zero, and so on. So we now want to tell it, if you get this point gets to the stage that this full image is now on the screen, to shift it back to the beginning. So we have to know what the coordinate of this one will be. So let's figure it out. Zero, zero shifted one full screen over would be negative 1024. And then shifting it two full screens over would be negative 2048. So we are going to move that over negative 2048. And then when that's at negative 2048, then this image will be on the screen. So let's take a look at our code. If global x is less than or equal to negative 2048, then make global x equal to zero. So it's saying reshift the entire image back to zero. And of course, when you make a change like that, a location change, you have to tell it to actually display the image at that new location. So background view, the coordinates are global x and zero. So let's see what happens. Sorry, I didn't switch fast enough. But you can see that it's shifting. There's that main image with the oval on it. We'll just have to be very patient. While you're waiting, you could be figuring out how would you increase that scrolling speed. If you said global x minus 10, global x minus 30, you would be correct. Here's that middle image, and this can be as long as you need it to be. Just remember, to add that to the calculation, so negative 1,024 1, plus whatever that width is, will give you um, that if global x is less than or equal to. Now here comes that duplicate image. We're going to see that rectangle show up right away. Watch for it. Here it comes. 
it's going to be fast. There's that rectangle. And the minute it switches, do you see that oval come up? So it did a fast glitch right back to the front. And then it started scrolling through again. So if you do it right and you do your calculations properly, you won't even notice that change. Because obviously I have the rectangle in the oval. You wouldn't have that on yours. So the average user would not see it do that switch. Now you can see that our background is jumpy. And that's because we've used a scrolling background versus a tiled background. But for a beginner activity, this is a perfect way to create a simple scrolling background. Now my question to you would be, how would you make it scroll to the right? How would you make it scroll up? How would you make it scroll down? So challenge yourself and play with the code and see if you can make it scroll in other ways. Faster, slower, be creative. I can't wait to see what you come up with.